Are you tired of the daily grind? Bored with the routine? Itching for a little action and a lot of laughs? If so, there's a show that's anything but mundane and everything you're looking for. It's the hilariously thrilling Alfred Hitchcock's The 39 Steps, and it's now touring nationwide. It's the little train that could. We had no idea it had this kind of mileage in it. Mysteries, spies, murder. Handcuffs. Handcuffs. Sexual tension. <laughs> intrigue. Sexual threads. Lots of smoke. <laughs> Lots of fog. Yeah, it creates a whole world from nothing. We just work on benches, basically, and chests. It's, it's pretty brilliant, actually. The 39 Steps has worked in London. Yeah. It has worked on Broadway. It has worked in Boston, Seattle, La Jolla. American audiences love it. She was looking for something. Yes. Something called the 39 Steps. If we can find out what the 39 Steps are. So, let me get this quite clear. Oh, do take a seat, Mr. Hannay. Thank you. Thank you. It was Hitchcock's no fool when it comes to dragging you by the nose through an adventure story. And the idea of an innocent man on the run is always, I think, is something that grips people. And also, the, the, the fa a hero, an old-fashioned hero, a patriotic man uh, who does something for no gain uh, is adorable. And of course, Hitchcock was sensible enough to put women in the story, which the original writer, John Buchan, did not. And so, you know, he bumps into various fascinating women en route. Actually, I will take my shoes off. Oh. And my stockings. <laughs> Can I be of any assistance? No, thank you. All right. I'll hold this. Hey. The audience, uh, it, it feeds you. The energy is, from the mm -hmm. audience is incredible. And I, and I love hearing people time and time again say, I had no idea I'd enjoy it that much. Mm -hmm. they, come, they leave and they say, I, I, I didn't know what quite to expect. I heard it was good. And they leave saying, I had no idea I would enjoy the evening that much. And I've seen so many families in the audience, too. I know, too. I know. You, it's you, great. You'll, you'll see a row, and, and it'll be five seats, and you'll have, you know, mom here, dad here, and there are three kids in between, and maybe grandma and grandpa on the sides. The people really use this as like a family thing to do and it and it works because well because it has so many elements and types of fun there is no turning back It's the acme of Britishness. But of course, that's nice to mock. I was in a film called Fish Call Wander, and it, it made everybody roar with laughter. The, the Brits found the Americans hilarious, and the Americans found the Brits hilarious. We find each other funny when it's a bit parodic like this. Um, but I think uh, that it is fairly universal. We've made a few changes uh, for the American audience. Um, we put in more Hitchcock references because you're so much more film savvy than a British audience is. And we changed some things that were sort of impenetrably British. Part of this show is this choreographed element that creates the space. Because there's only four trunks and a window frame and four people. And we go so many places. And we create so many things and invite the audience to create them with us. Nothing is impromptu. It's like a very rigorous ballet. I mean, people are astonished by how rigorous it is when new people come in. There really isn't much leeway. It's like doing a musical or doing a dance. Um, it's, it's utterly precise. Uh, but we didn't know it would have to be like that when we started. We simply discovered it was actually physically dangerous to be anything else because there's so much kind of uh, complex movement in it. Golly. <laughs> It is a thriller, but it's also got this thread of sort of black comedy through it. And I think people like that. I think uh, they like their thrills, but they like to, to, to have a laugh as well. And I think he does that extremely well. And I think that's what this production bring, is able to bring out so well. You know, people yeah. say, oh, Hitchcock's not, a, not funny. 39 Steps, I don't remember that being a comedy. But there are moments that you can really, and Mariah Aiken, our director, has, has been the one to really, you know, 
bring that to life for us and, yeah. and, and pull that out of us. And the added joke for our show is that there are only four of us. And as I've said, it's the four of us trying to, to, to um, you know, essay this impossible task. And, yeah. uh, and uh, that's, you know, there's, Mariah always says that the subtitle should be There Aren't Enough of Us. Because <laughs> the other two guys and, and um, Jen have to play all the other parts. So a lot of comedy comes out of that, obviously. <laughs> It is for everybody. It, it is. It is fast-paced. It is uh, not a typical book play. There's. A, the, if you look at the script, it sort of gives you some of Hitchcock's film. A lot of lines come directly from the film, but the rest comes from the imagination of the director and actors in the space. So it just it takes off like a gunshot and only goes up from there. Mm -hmm. So it's incredibly fast-paced, it's uh, thoroughly enjoyable, it, it leaves the audience breathless at points, and us too, at points too. But that, that is thrilling to watch, and it's also for Hitchcock fans, or not so for Hitchcock fans. Hitchcock fans love this show because it references Hitchcock a lot. But it, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's an adaptation of that film, so it doesn't, you don't have to know a lot of Hitchcock to enjoy the piece thoroughly, but those who do, love it. Will Mr. Hammond be staying? I don't think so, dear. <laughs> Unless, of course, you decide to join us for lunch. <laughs> I don't think there's anything typical about it because it, it's sort of genre defined. You don't, I don't really know what, I mean, I find it incredibly difficult to describe. And even people who are briefed by their friends and go and see the show are always surprised when it begins. And some audiences cotton on immediately and others take a bit longer. But I do have to say that Patrick Barlow has got some sort of magic in his writing, that it's very rare that people are not pretty totally seduced by the end. And I think it is in the writing. Uh, he's, he's mad, but he, but he keeps the story, keeps some tension going uh, as well. Didn't she tell you what this foreign agent looked like? No, no, there wasn't time. There was one thing. Part of his little finger was missing. Which little finger? This one, I think. Are you sure it wasn't this one? I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Hannah, I'm afraid I've been guilty of leading you down the garden path. Or should I say up? I can never remember. Uh, and what we have is this extra layer of effortful comedy as four people try to, to recreate frame by frame. We've been very careful even the shape of the hills in the shadow play bit is taken from the movie and about 60 percent of the dialogue is from the movie um and some of the very best jokes some of the unexpectedly kind of sexy jokes are from hitchcock nobody remembers that that also was a comedy <laughs> I think the audience is composed of very odd elements, not often seen together. You know, you get H Hitchcock aficionados, uh, you get plenty of sort of grey heads who remember that and love it. Uh, you also get little boys howling with laughter with their grandparents. Um, you get, I mean, the, the age range is, is absolutely classic and it gives me enormous pleasure to look down from above and see a group like that, uh, all laughing at the same things and then discussing it ardently on the sidewalk afterwards. It's such a feel-good type of entertainment, and people really go there, and they, they go away completely fulfilled and entertained, and, and they have a laugh. I mean, good, thick, belly laughs. So um, I think people who know Hitchcock will get a great kick out of it because they'll be able to recognize a lot of things, but you don't need to know the movie or know Hitchcock at all to really enjoy what the piece is because it's really just a great piece of fun. Well, I eavesdropped on the audience uh, always. And, um, and what the audience, what I hear when I eavesdrop is that uh, it's original, that they've never seen anything like it. And that's because of this sort of, you know, conglomeration of ingredients that aren't always together. You know, there's, there's the danger, suspense, sex, slapstick, um, quick change artistry. I, I love f f uh, the knowledge that people leave seeing what theater does best. Actors in a space, creating in front of them and engaging their imagination. That is such a joy. Uh, we, we sometimes forget with lots of other things that that is what happens in this space and what works best in this space in theater. 
And I love that. And people say it over and over again. It's like, I, I, I just was so swept away, and it was all because of their imagination. We, we, have a, we have great props and some wonderful lighting, but it is the voice, the body, and the space. And audiences recreate the story and think, well, that, mostly that was your imagination that did it. And I, <laughs> I love that. I love that. What this show gives the audience is just a great excuse to laugh and to let go. And sometimes we forget that that's so valuable. Just that release and happiness. This Tony and Drama Desk Award winning comedy will leave you in stitches. If you're looking for a real comic thrill, then don't miss your chance to see Alfred Hitchcock's The 39 Steps, now touring many Broadway across America cities. Log on to broadwayacrossamerica.com for more information.